We've made it to another episode of At the Market with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival presented by MyFortLauderdaleBeach.com. Today I hang out with Chef Tim from Bolero where we cook up some amazing swordfish. Check this out. So we're done exploring the market. We're here with Chef Tim from Bolero. Chef, what are we making today? We're going to make a crispy potato hash with a seasoned swordfish and a mango asparagus salad. That sounds like a lot, but I have a feeling we're going to make it really simple. <laughs> it so is. what's the first step? First step is we're going to start cutting up the vegetables for the hash. All right, let's do it. All right. Start with the potatoes. We're going to cut them into little rings. I would totally slice my hand off right now. I have once or twice. Uh, so we got those done. Next we'll go to the bell peppers. I'm gonna keep them a little bit, do a little bit differently. I'm not gonna julienne them. You're not gonna do what to them? Julienne them. Julienne them. What, yeah. what the hell does that mean? So julienne is strips, basically strips of bell peppers. And what is this, what is this good for? Is this like, Brunch dish, a dinner dish, or I'll do more of a dinner dish. Or, I mean, really anytime. I mean, fish is pretty cross utilized except for breakfast. I don't really use it much in breakfast anymore. Got um, a more shrimp that way. Not, not sea bass and not grouper. All right. All right. So, if you would, you put one of those sticks of butter in that first pan. Put a stick of butter. The smaller or the larger? Pan? Large. Do it. So, Bolero, I've been there. Okay. I've done it. What is it? Explain in your terms to someone that works in Bolero. So, the experience. Bolero, we have two different, basically, have two different buildings. We have a premium building and we have a commercial building. So, we're doing bowling alley. Our premium buildings are our Dania store, our Boga store, uh, Jupiter, and Miami. Basically, the biggest difference is just the setup and the way it's handled. Our premiums have fresh menus. They're really nice. Yeah. So our traditionals are traditional bowling alley. The ones that were here 60 years ago. So Dania's a brand new build out. That so Dania's for the millennials. Dania is for the <laughs> millennials. Corporate events. It's Instagrammable. It is. It is very much so. We see a lot of it. Um, I mean, literally, I'll have 20 corporate events this weekend that I have to deal with. And, uh, yeah. so, it, so it's not just fried bar food. You know, elevated the experience for bowling. We have elevated the experience. We are still coming back from the COVID times, putting back in our full menu. It's taking time, but that's why I'm there now. We try to get all that back in place. <laughs> That was my main goal of coming back was to put that in place. All right. All right. So we got some butter there, nice and melted. Now we're gonna start basically shingling these in there. So we're gonna create like a ring. Yeah, so a big ring. I'll do it this part. Yeah. 
gonna need a lot of that flooding. We're gonna need some room for the other veggies that they're cooked down. And once they once they cook for a minute or two, we'll flip them over to the browns on the other side. And you have your so just making an even even brown. Yep. So all of this will go into the hash. But yeah, Valero has been fun. It's a different experience for me coming from hotels, restaurants. It took a little time to get used to, but it's uh, it's a good change of pace for me. I was ready to slow down and get out of that. It's entertainment now. It's it is a hundred percent entertainment now. A lot of kids. I do a lot of birthday parties. So I guess the next step we'll do is we'll prep the salad for the top of it. So what are we doing? Basically, cut this mango into some strips. You have really, seared in that you found really good mangoes. You yeah. found really good mangoes. I was shocked. So, when you cut open a mango, what are you looking for to make sure it's the mango that you want? You really want that yellowish in color. Um, make sure you don't have any super soft spots. Okay. Or yeah, I mean, if you can get into a nice, green, crispy green, green spot on, which you're looking for with an orange. We only get the best at the Los Olos Ocean side mode. I, I can attest to that now. <laughs> First time using it, so. And here you're just cutting a thin layer of the skin off? Oh, yeah, I'm just taking the top layer of rind off just because it's a little more. I would never eat the rind of it. For personal preference. Personal preference. Makes cooking it a lot easier too. You don't have a skin to deal with. Should I flip our potatoes? Yeah, go ahead, flip the Throwing some of these in there. Take a traditional hack, basically. Just get everything cooked down. Now, do you prefer the potatoes sliced like this or cubed? You know, in both ways. When I think of a hash, I think of a cube. It's just more know. fun to do things differently than most people do. Um, never been inside the box when it comes to cooking. Okay. Uh, made a lot of fun stuff in my life, and why go the normal way? So we're going to throw some oil over in that pan over there. So now we're just heating up oil to cook the fish in. We're using our, using our induction burners from our friends at Culinary Community uh, off of Andrews in 84. It's a chef's dream. You don't have to be a professional chef to go there. So anybody can walk in. Uh, Aaron and his team will help you out. So if you need a knife sharpened, they need to work something through a kitchen, they'll yeah. show you what to do. I'm actually looking at a Dutch burn at one of my stores right now. Oh, well, they're a convenient place to go. Yeah. So, Tim, while we do this, let the hash do what it's got to do, simmer, marinate, marry all together. We'll let you prep your fish. Yeah. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back after this. Stick around. <laughs> Hash is still going. Tim started cooking the swordfish. So what are we doing with the swordfish? Are we searing it, browning it? What's the... So we're going to sear it and really just get it. I mean, swordfish is one of the tougher fishes to cook because you can overcook it real fast um, if you're not careful. That's why I have you. Yeah. So swordfish is one of the uh, more difficult ones for me, personally. Grouper is a lot easier. Well, I couldn't catch the grouper this morning. So well, all I got was swordfish. <laughs> just be a better fisherman than that. So basically, we're waiting on it to, on the bottom, you'll see a nice change in color. Okay. And once that happens, we'll flip it, and it'll cook the other side equally. And then you're just going to let it basically sit and cook the rest of the way through. Okay. You'll we'll sear every side to get it nice and crunchy. It'll be a nice cup. We'll cut it. What are, what are we still, what are we doing with our yeah, so hash? We're just checking them. Once they're soft, they're done. So like we're almost there. We have, we'll get this in a second, and then we'll be done with it. I like it. 
So here you're just cutting pieces of this Yeah, just trying to cut it into little strips. It's gonna go into that tomato pan when it's done. Get a good sear on it. Go with the mangoes. Mangoes are gonna be a good sear on it too. Mm -hmm. So now let's see how we get the nice color from up and up now. Just want a little bit, you don't want to brown it too much. Perfect. Because then once we go to the other side, it'll cook all the way through. Okay. Otherwise, you'll get one side that's overdone and one side that's underdone. Doesn't sound too good to me. So, one of my favorite things out of all of this, every time that we do these episodes, is watching someone play. It is so, I'm excited to see how you use this for. It is going to be a challenge. Um, let's see what I can come up with. <laughs> I don't ever think anything through beforehand. Yeah. Whatever comes about. It's an interesting way to live life. It's more fun now. So we did go to Saucy Lips. And we got ourselves a handcrafted gourmet. Gourmet. Jalapeno green apple sauce. Get out of your way. So we're taking our potatoes out of the out of the hash. Yep. We're searing the size of our our swordfish. Yep. What was it about this sauce from saucy fish that you liked? You know, it was a nice balance. It wasn't super overpowering hot, but it had a cool earthy vibe to it. And with swordfish and potatoes and hash is kind of a natural uh, you don't really need to eat. There's not a whole lot of heat in it. Are you just gonna drizzle it on? What's the plan? I'm gonna drizzle it on. Come up with something. Again, we, we don't think it through. We just do it at, nah. at, at the whim. What's the fun part about thinking it through? <laughs> the artist is at work. I love the colors. So to bring it up with that mango, we just. Uh, So what do we do now? I'm just going to sear the mangoes and the asparagus in there to top this. Get a little more color with it. So the swordfish we're going to pull out and sit and let it rest for a second. And when you, let's say, let it rest, essentially it's still going to continue to cook a little bit. It's going to continue to cook on the inside, but not Hopefully. with the heat. Yeah, we don't want the heat. We don't need any more heat. There's plenty of heat on it already. Because we're overcooking it. Just let it sit there. You let it sit there all day. I mean, it's hotter outside, but there's heat in there. A lot of it. This is a handful. It's not going to be very long. You can hear that sizzle up in the Just a few, maybe a minute. So the way that you're doing this, it's not going to be too overpowering. It's not going to be on every piece of the nope. dish. If you want it, it's there. If you're not, you can, if you don't want it, you can kind of work around it. Correct. But it'll just add a little more flavor to the whole dish. Instead of a one or two dimensional dish, just add another whole layer of it. All right. We'll take those now. Balls. 
so a dice roll. There you do a nice, light, summer fish. You did it! Fine. Well, not we, you. <laughs> I mean, you did a little bit of the cooking. I, I did me. nothing but stand here. You helped me not burn it. <laughs> Alright, I'll take that. Chef, thank you so much. Uh, if you're looking for something to do, make sure you check out Bolero. Uh, they have a, a bunch of locations. If you want a traditional bowling alley, you got it. If you want high class Instagrammable, we definitely have that for you. Tim, thank you so much. Before I let you go, I have to ask one question. What do you love about Fort Lauderdale Beach? Um, I mean, being down here now seven years, coming from Alabama, it's just a whole new ball game of fresh ingredients that I never got to deal with back in Alabama. And it's helped oh, increase my palate. All right, I like it. Thank you so much, Tim. You've been watching At the Market with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival, presented by myfortlauderdalebeach.com.